did guess. that time for a crime that you didn't do? Yeah, yeah, I did 30 years, brother, for my kid. Actually, let me, let me explain something without getting too deep in that. I, um, I mean, if you Google me, you see all my articles. I've been in the Daily News, the Post, and all that since I've been on several times. Um, right now, I've been blessed to have the um, Queens DA under the new administration to actually investigate my case with their new integrity unit. So, you know, it's not like we ain't been fighting. I just accepted it. Yeah, I did 30 years. And you know, it's not like that. I got a good lawyer team. We've been fighting it the whole time. I never once. You know, that's why I did so much time. They, they couldn't understand. Like, even when they said, look, man, you can make the board if you just admit you did. I went to the board three times. I went to, I got hit twice and then 18 months. So I did the quarter plus two two-year hits at the board and the 18-month hit before I made the board because I refused. My mindset was like, listen, a lot of time in my life, I never really stood for nothing. You know, I, I mean, whether it was being a good friend, a loyal husband or whatever, I, you know, my thing was about getting the bag and surviving. You know, so if I felt you crossed me, I'm gonna cross you first, you know? It was about survival. So I said, you know what? I never really stood for nothing, but one, one thing I'm gonna stand for is that, well, I have to die inside this prison. I'm never gonna admit to a crime that I did not do. And that's why, to this day, I never did, to this day. And I was offered eight and a third to quarter. I was offered, they started with 15, they went all the way down to eight and a third. The court, I told him I'd never do that for something I didn't do. And I had to do 30 years. And I'm still fighting for it. I'm 55. Now it's 23 when I got locked up. They're not saying that I didn't do crimes on the street. Because I did a lot of crimes on the street. You know, I wasn't I wasn't one of these guys that was going to college and just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I've always admitted that, yes, I... I was a part of the problem. I sold drugs in the community. I robbed other drug dealers. I did what I had to do to survive. But what I did time for and what I was accused of, no, I didn't do that. And I don't feel because I did do other things that I should just be collateral damage for that. Not at all. That's, 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 that's crazy, bro. And I know that's a whole nother world of stories. Because, you know, it's... Is I got to take my hat off for to a dude that could even function with all of that time, knowing that he didn't do that crime. Like that'll eat me away. That'll eat me from the inside out. Like you feel what I'm saying? That I'll probably never time, come home. For a time, it had me like that. It, it went uh, for a time. I went through a point where um, I didn't really give a fuck. You know, just being out, I really didn't give a fuck whether. Um, I lived or died, but I didn't have the courage to kill myself. How I, how I conducted myself that, you know, you could see it in my attitude and the way I acted, the, you know, just the aggressiveness and shit like that. And, uh, you know, just the selfishness and how I moved, that was because I was in pain. You know what I mean? I realized that's one of the, the worst states that any man could be. When you, when you lose hope, Hope is one of the worst things that you can ever lose. Hope. As long as you keep hope, you can always cure yourself. You can always get better. Motherfucker, you can't get better when you don't have no hope because you don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck about yourself. It's impossible for you to care about someone else. But how was it being from Jersey? tossed on Rikers Island in 89 when it was out of control. Yeah, well, I wasn't the only dude from Jersey. You know, you get dudes from all over the country that come through um, New York and get knocked off. But basically, I was the only dude from Jersey in the areas where I was at, you mm -hmm. know? And just, I appreciate that I was around a lot of good dudes, you know? And I was a shorty. You know, I was, I had just turned 23 when I came in. And um, at that time, they got which you probably uh, familiar with CMCs, yeah, central monitoring cases. So you know back then it's a little different from now. If you were CMC back then, you either had 
it's because of your case or you caught a body on the island or you caught a body in one of the borough houses or you tried to escape. Those was basically the the three criteria that would get you in the CMC. So you, you had a different caliber of dudes and, you know, I was around, you know, some, some heavy hitters from basically every borough. Um, you know, Prince, Wall and all them out of Queens and they teams, basically their whole team was CMC. You know, Ron Do, some heavy hitters from uptown out of the Bronx. You know, George Fuellen from Harlem, uh, Baby Sam, his team from out of Brooklyn. So you had a you had a different caliber of people back then. You know, really on some grown man shit. But um, for me, it was different because I had never seen that inside any jails in Jersey. I had never did no max time in Jersey. You know, I just did like two and a half years out there. So that would be the spot I was in is like equal to a medium out here, you know. But even in the county jails like that, the island, that shit was, you know, what the shorty say now, lit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That shit was, it was, it was different, man. Um, we could wear jewelry back then. So, you know, I work on the island now. I go up in there, you know, with my job. And um, you see now, like, the young brothers that so-called run in the house. The most you'll see, they'll be outside the gate talking to, to, to the, um, the female officers. Or, but they ain't really doing that. You know, back then, you step in the house, you could basically tell by who orchestrating the phone, who, like, kind of running the house because the phones was free that time. And it was, you know, that was essential for a lot of people. Um, we could wear jewelry, so... You would see, you know, just anybody wasn't able to wear no jewelry on the island. It it just, that's not how it was. So, different atmosphere. You have millionaires out there. This is the crack epidemic. So, a lot of these brothers was millionaires, man. Um, And I was thankful to what I could say be mentored by a lot of the dudes that I was mentored by. But at the same token, how you had good dudes dudes was getting shot down and some dudes were shooting themselves just not to go up north you know and it wasn't no hard thing for a dude to get a gun dudes had real double oh sevens um you know the 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 razors scalpels all that shit but the, the thing that really got me was the women down there i'd never been into a environment where it was so many women and these, these women was from out of people hoods. So it, it just brought something different. And what part of Jersey you from? I'm, I'm originally out of Bergen County. That's where I'm from, right? That's like Hackensack, Tina, Inglewood, right across the George Washington Bridge. But, you know, um, basically anywhere in North Jersey, I would be anywhere in Harlem, Bronx was kind of my areas in New York. At that time, Harlem in the Bronx, but um, it's it's just different. It's nothing like Rikers Island. And the sea, you know, now I'm I'm there, and it's only four buildings that's open, and you know they don't let them wear their own clothes no more and shit like that. And, and the environment is different. The mentality is different. Like I said, you had grown men. We we had boxing, you know, going on back then. You know, motherfuckers worked out, was in shape. You know, you like I said, you have millionaires and dudes that was doing real life shit. Not saying that you don't got some of the brothers that's locked up now that's not getting money and things like that. But for me, going up in there, the mentality, mentality with these, especially young brothers, like with the K two and just they not even really cleaning themselves. They don't. You don't even see that many dudes working out no more. You see a dude now. Like, you can see he working out, he stand down. Whereas before, everybody worked out. Like, it, you stood out if you didn't work out, mm. you know? So it, it's a big difference now, being up in there, coming in there, especially in 89, to um, working in now in 2022 and, and just seeing the mindset. You said you went straight to HDM? When I started out, at that time, the the bro- you had like the sixth floor Queens house, sixth floor Bronx house, tenth floor Brooklyn house, and um, then they had like a spot in North Facility. Those was like all the main CMC borough spots. 
And then in HDM, you have one B. You have one side of one B was the Bing, and then you have one B. And um, that's basically where I got my first education at. You know, in the borough houses, I was meeting, because they was rotating us. You wouldn't stay because, you know, you have millionaires, you have niggas with money that could get shit done. So they wouldn't keep you in a borough house like too long because you get too familiar with the officers. They know you was capable of having shit done. So I had made my rounds. By the time I hit HDM, you know, I, you know, got in some incidents, start meeting people. Um, seeing who is who. Did dudes and try to try you because you was from Jersey? Of or? course. Nice. Nah, from Jersey. I mean, I'm going to keep it from what I can remember. Remember, I'm going back 30-something years. Most of the problems were dudes that where I was from was more like lame. You know, but you don't... I'm just getting there, so I don't know who. who I don't really know their names. I don't really know these niggas is like suckers just trying to get points because they see I'm there by myself. Mm. Most of the dumb motherfuckers, they, it was about what you do in town, what you do in the street. Mm. You know, but I did, I had some problems, you know, when I first came in and I always took care of it. Um, and that helped me. I learned quickly that when you step up for yourself, people that like you, they gonna hold you down. But even if you don't step up for yourself, even the brothers that really liked you at that period, you know, cause you had the kind, you was, you strong as your weakest link. So we don't want nobody around us that he gonna just be a weak link for us all the time. You know what I mean? So if you ain't fighting for yourself, what, what, what asset you gonna bring to the team? So I learned quickly. And like I said, the dudes I was around, it was, these was dudes like, if you wanted to be accepted by them, and I'm young, I'm 23, I'm definitely impressionable. I'm around Wall Corley, out of foot. I'm around Gerald Prince, man. I'm around Ron Duke. I'm around some, you know, heavy hitters. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by these dudes because I'm young. And so I, they ain't had to tell me your move like this. I'm watching them and learning. When Pope and shit get hot, I'm watching them breaking putting the shampoo on the floor, putting the glass on the floor, breaking the brooms, telling dudes get the toilet tissue, put it in your nuts, put shit around your thumbs. I'm, I'm learning. This is what you do in these type of incidents. I'm learning that, yo, if this happened, you know, I, it ain't take me coming to New York to be to get hard. I always had hard. But to learn, like, okay, this is what we do over here because in Jersey, it's more fighting. Ten niggas might jump you or bust you in the head with something. It ain't that much cutting back then. When dudes got knives and shit like that, it was really something serious. Whereas it's almost, it was like standard over here to cut a door. You know, out my way, motherfuckers be fighting. So, so it was, it was yeah. burrows. It was when you came through. It was burrows beefing with each other. Yeah, it was still burrows or projects. You know, like you know, like certain hoods. You even sometimes niggas from Brooklyn might, of course, when it's a borough, they gonna stick together. But niggas from Fort Greene, they don't just rock with niggas from say somewhere in Brownsville, one of the hoods out in Brownsville. It ain't like that. But some borough shit or back then, it was five percenters, Muslims. You know, it was that that could bring brothers together too. You know, if you if you was God body, it didn't matter. Y'all got y'all brothers. Muslim, your brother, shit like that. Latin kings, your brothers, but you know how it's gonna always be some tribal shit. It's tribal shit now, just not to that same degree. You know, I see it's it's like um how can I put this? Once once you show who you are, once you show who you are, a shark, you know, another shark might see a shark, but still got to prove that it's a shark before they let them, you know, run in the pack like that. Same thing with a lion. They might detect that it's a lion, but you got to show that you a lion before you can run with the other lion. And it's the same thing. Yeah, motherfuckers see you, but you got to show who you are. And that 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 mindset is going to embrace you. A sucker is going to always be a sucker. You was with um, Born Son and HDM? 
That's my comrade. I was with Born Son. I seen um, Shay showed me now. Me and Born Son met in Attica. That's Noah. That's his attribute is Noah. But yeah, we met in Attica. Born Son was one of the. Um, we worked in the gym together. Matter of fact, I seen this. Born Son had like one of the heaviest bench presses in the jail. I'm talking about that shit was bending on both sides of weight. <laughs> like 400 and change, close to 500 on the bench press. He's not, he's stocky, but he's not a real tall, tall or real big dude, but he's strong as a motherfucker. I, I was in Attica twice. The first time I got there, it was in, I came out the box. I went from Elmira to Attica box, as I said. Then they let me off. So it's like 97. And um, I had a comrade from out of, um, I think he had a Sumner. Yeah, he had a Sumner on um, Majesty. All right. So another comrade of mine introduced me to Majesty, and Madge introduced me to Born Son. And, and you know, and he Muslim, you know, I was dating. So we, we had that connect. And then we had kind of, got into this thing called the Nubian Brotherhood too. So like, you know, even though he wasn't really, he was always for the people, born son. He definitely was for the people. So anything that was about the people, we kind of gravitated towards. Yeah. And I know he's in a wheelchair now, unfortunately. Um, I came through Wendy's a while back and um, he was up there in Wendy's hospital. So I used to send him little tobacco and shit like that. But I I haven't seen him since he went home. It's no one word to put it put to this prison shit and it affects everybody. You know, I know a lot of times people want to hear the gory stories, you know, and you know how you bust your gun. Yeah, that come with that, depending on what type of life you is, but it's another side to that shit that affects all of us mentally. Even if you don't see it physically it is there. It affects us, man. When you're doing these long-term confinements, I did 30 years, man. It's a lot of time for a young kid and the shit you go through. It's, it's things now that I'm seeing and I'm realizing, like, damn, my way of thinking was fucked up. I didn't know because everybody around me thought like that. You know, we come to the yard, my team, we thinking about how we gonna get money. Same thing like in the street. That, but as we doing this shit for years, we oppressing the weak or you know we worry about anybody's a threat you know and it's survival when you're thinking like that 10 15 20 years now minded like that and then you can put up out here you gotta be ready if you dig what i'm saying because i could tell you a whole bunch of stories about niggas i hit or who got hit that's just one part of that shit that's just one part of it man that any man is supposed to do that's a man you're going to defend yourself but the shit that a lot of people don't know about and don't see is the mental shit that that do to you and what makes this channel a, a lot different from a lot of other channels is on, on here we, a lot of dudes come on here and we talk about our losses not just our wins you for sure me? Like, you know I spoke about everything from niggas robbing me to everything what we really addressing here is the fact that, you know, our people are mass incarcerated. One out of three black men is going to the penitentiary. So it's like this penitentiary thing, as sad as it may sound, it's it's a it's a part of the black lifestyle, man. It's crazy because we can't avoid it. One out of three of us statistically is going to go to the penitentiary. So sometimes we got to get this off our chest, the type of stuff that we experienced in there, because at the end of the day, None of this stuff is normal. Like all of this stuff is psychologically scarring and, and and traumatizing, and we all suffer from PTSD that went through that whole uh, prison situation. Sure. Especially, especially if you went in there young. I went in there at sixteen. You understand? I was facing twenty five to life at sixteen, and, and, and by my lucky stars, I only did six years. But for the most part, everything we experience. Later on in life, you realize, yo, I'm I'm actually traumatized from this stuff. But, but look, let me, let me let me jump in and say this right one. I do believe that 
we learn more from our losses. I mean, everybody likes winning. So, you know, you celebrate when you win, but you, when you lose, you want to learn how not to lose. So that's why I don't feel good because nobody likes losing. So I agree with you with that. But like coming up north, my, my, I hit Sing Sing. All right, Sing Sing. Back then, Sing Sing used to be transing. All right. So I already knew by now, by the time I get up north, I know people. I go to downstate, I go to Sing Sing. But I really, I just knew mainly people that was with me in HDM or that was CMC. Uh, you know, we had the little boxing thing in HDM, so I met a few brothers through the boxing. And I used to play ball real good. You know, I, I mean, there ain't no secret. I was a fly motherfucker, man. You know, for real, for real. From Jersey, you know, I, I held my shit down. So, I, you know, ball in New York, balling is like how boxing is in Jersey. Like how everybody come out for the, in Jersey, you, you got the gloves on the yard in the prison. You could go get the gloves. They got rings in there. They go in the gym. It's big back then. But over here, box, I mean, basketball, you play ball nice. You know, you got the, the women CEOs, everybody coming out to the yard to see niggas play ball. So I, I was pretty good in ball. So I had met a lot of people do that. But um, I was green. I ain't know I was green, though. I come in one day, I come into the cell, I go to sleep. I don't even know. Niggas done been in my cell, robbed me. You know, I'm still new to this shit. I wake up, I went to um, go get some cosmetics, and my cosmetics was gone. I'm like, oh shit. So I looked, I looked under the bed, and my sneakers were still lit. I said, all right, cool. But they took my sweatshoes. And the reason why I found out later they didn't take my sneakers because I was the only niggas in B Block anyway that had those kind of sneakers. I just, you know, I'm still coming from the street. I was the only one that had them. But what, what, I knew. What kind of sneakers, what kind of sneakers was they? Some type of Nikes back then. Nikes, you know, because that was the shit I wore. It's, hey, this, um, this 90, and back then you could bring... You could come. You could still come from the island. They had just stopped people from bringing their cosmetics and shit through downstate. But Sing Sing was the only jail still allowing people to bring like clothes they already had home. You could still bring it in the jail. They didn't have to come from the store. That was the last spot that was doing that back then. So you know, dudes, a lot of people had the valleys, no shit like that. So um. I knew though, you know, like I said, I was groomed by, you know, a lot of the right minds before I even came up north on what to do and how to do it. So I knew it when my shit, I stuck my mirror out and I seen a kid like three, three cells down. He put his mirror back in real quick and he was keep lying. So I said, all right, this nigga knew who did it. So my man came through. I ain't the good brother. I ain't seen him in a long time, man. He was like, me and him was like one of the youngest brothers. He was younger than me. That was um, in CMC and on at this time. Out of Brooklyn, a brother by the name of Newt. You probably heard of him. He's doing a lot of community work now in the street, you know, positive things. Been in a couple of books. He was, laying, he was young, but he was laying down a lot of shit in Brooklyn back in the 80s. He's from out of Brownsville. Yeah, I know. I'm familiar with the bro. All right. From up on the hill. Mm-hmm. All right. So, New came through. When he came through, I told him what happened. Now, they had already, when I hit reception, gave me a gun already. As soon as I had hit reception, they gave me a gun. So, he was like, yo, a certain dude, he's like, yo, I know that nigga because he was keep locked too. He said, yo, either that nigga know about it or something and you I don't know you've been to Sing Sing nah but I'm, I'm alright well Sing Sing is the Sing Sing was the only joint Sing Sing got on one company like 90 cells shit like 80 some cells on one company shit's as long as three ways to get on the company and they still got the the cells with the police gotta come down with the key and open and they hit the lever mm-hmm. the, how the old prisons was yeah, like, like they open up the key yeah, like, and they hit the lever and all the cells open up. That's how, but the keep lock 
it was ways that they could get out their cells if it wasn't locked with the key, you know? So a lot of them dudes used to get out, be running around doing shit. So, he, you know, it is what it is. The thing back then was, if someone steals from you on the company and you don't know who did it, the first person you check is with the porters. And if any you get any inclination that a certain or specific person has something to do it or the port, you got to hit somebody. It was a way, you know, this is the people that groomed me, how they groomed me. You got to hit somebody because that's the only way to set the tone from you not this you not being open season. And I I, use, I like nice shit. You know, I like I like to have nice shit. So I already knew what I had to do, but this was my first time. I had never hit nobody before. Uh, you know, back then, years later, that's when, you know, they start training us. You know, you had dudes that would teach you how to fight with knives and shit, but back then, I'm still coming in. But my man gave me the test. He said, yo, you want me to take care of it? And I was like, nah, I got it. And again, back then, a dude would tell you that, and he might do that, but you, you will never be seen as an equal. I mean, think about it. If I got to handle your beef, I may like you, but I'm never going to see you as equal because you ain't handling your own business. So I told him, I got it. A couple of days later, one of the brothers that I felt had something to do with it, I got at him. I ain't get him good. Like I said, I was, was kind of new with this shit. And I'm, you know, he was Brooklyn, Brooklyn dude, had a few dudes with him, but I made the move. I made the move. So it was respected. From there, I start setting the tone like, yo, he gonna go out for his. And I seen the response that I got, like the doors that start opening for me. You know, with, you know, like everybody likes a winner. So motherfucker, and it's more, it's more people without courage in prison, despite what the movies show, than people with courage in prison. So people gonna attach to a leader. They are gonna attach to somebody that got heart. They gonna, they gonna attach to somebody that's getting money. You, you know how it is. So, like I said, at that point, man, it just opened the door for me and I never looked back. I wasn't, I'm not saying I was no tough guy and running around, but you know, I stayed in tip top shape, tip top shape, I box, I play ball, I was, I get money. You know what I'm saying? I always get money, always stay fly, always kept nice something coming to see me on a visit. So people attached to that. And I always held my own all the way up. And I done been in some of the racial riots in Clinton. In 93, I made my rounds. I started out in Sing Sing first. I went to Clinton. I stayed at Clinton for like five years, but I was, you know, back then you go back and forth to Unit 14 and they put you back in population. Then um, I went out to Jersey for a minute to fight some old cases. I came back. I went to, I went to, um, some big shit happened in Clinton and they shipped me to um, Southport, a group of us to Southport on the weekend. So I got to the port. That was my first time there. That was in 97. And that was a whole different experience, Southport. I don't know if you've been through there, but back then, how that shit was. Now, crazy. I'm about to drop a story. I'm about to drop a story about Southport with a dude like next yeah. this week. But I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar. Yeah. So I hit the port my first time. And you, this is 97. So this is around the same time. The gang thing is coming up north. It's down on the island, but it ain't really hit up north yet. But a lot of the, a lot of the like shakers that was doing shit on the island as it was growing, they was starting to come up north, and some of them was going to Southport. So that was the first time I heard the roll call. You know, I've been up north. I didn't even know what that shit was back then. They, you know, they ain't like now. They're locked dudes up for that shit, but back then, man, them dudes be screaming the roll call, you hear that shit from a whole nother area of the jail, you know? Mm -hmm. So, 